as somebody who is fascinated by military history, where do you put violence as uh, as, as in terms of the human condition? Is it core to being human or is it just a little uh, tool that we use every once in a while? So I'm going to respond to your question with a question. What do you see the difference being between violence and force? Let me, let me go farther. I'm not sure that violence is something that we have to put up with as human beings forever, that we must resign ourselves to violence forever. But I have a much harder time seeing us able to abolish force. And I there's going to be some ground where if those two things are not the same, and I don't know that maybe they are, where there's certainly some crossover. And the re I think force, you know, you're an engineer, you'll understand this better than I do, but think about it as a physical law. Um, if you can't stop something from moving in a certain direction without pushing back in that same direction, um, I'm not, I'm not sure that you can have a society or a civilization without the ability to use a counterforce when things are going wrong, whether it's on an individual level, right? A uh, person attacks another person, so you step in to save that person, um, or on, uh, you know, even at the highest levels of politics or anything else, a counterforce to stop the uh, inertia or the impetus of, 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 of another movement. So I think that force is, is a simple almost law of physics in human interaction, especially at the civilizational level. I think civilization requires a certain amount of if not violence, then force. So, um, and again, they, they, they've talked, I mean, it goes back into you know, St. Augustine, all kinds of Christian beliefs about the, the proper use of force, and people have, have philosophically tried to decide between, can you have a sort of an ahinsa, uh, Buddhist sort of, we, you know, we will be nonviolent toward everything and exert no force, or, or there's a reason to have force in order to create the space for good. Uh, I think force is inevitable. Now, we can talk, and, I, and I've not come up to the conclusion myself, uh, if there is a distinction to be made between force and violence. I mean, is, is, um, is a nonviolent force enough, or is violence when done for the cause of good a different thing than violence done either for the cause of evil, as you would say, or simply for random reasons? I mean, we humans lack control sometimes. We can be violent for no apparent reason or goal. Um, and that's, I mean, listen, you look at the, uh, the criminal justice system alone and the way we we um, interact with people who are acting out in ways that we as a society have decided is, is intolerable. Can you deal with that without force and at some level violence? I don't know. Can you maintain peacefulness without force? I don't know. Just to uh, be a little bit more specific about the idea of force, do you put force as general enough to include force in the space of ideas. So you mentioned Buddhism or uh, religion or just Twitter. <laughs> I can think of no things farther apart than that. Okay. <laughs> Is uh, the battles we do in the space of ideas of, um, you know, the great debates throughout history, do you put force into that or do you, in this conversation, are we trying to right now keep it to just physical force? In saying that you you have an intuition that force might be with us much longer than violence. I think the two bleed together. So um take because it's it's always it's always my go-to example. I'm afraid and I'm sure that the listeners all hate it, but but take <laughs> take Germany during uh, uh, the 1920s, early 1930s before the Nazis came to power. Uh, and they were always involved in some level of force, you know, beating up in the streets or whatever it might be. But think about it more like an intellectual discussion until a certain point. Um, is there it, it would be difficult, I imagine, to keep the intellectual counterforce of ideas, from at some point degenerating into something that's more um, coercion, um, counterforce, if we want to use the phrases we were just talking about. So I think the two are, are intimately connected. I mean, uh, actions follow thought, right? And at a certain point, I think especially when, when one is not achieving the goals that they want to achieve through uh, peaceful discussion or argumentation or um, trying to convince the other side 
that sometimes the next level of operations is something a little bit more physically uh, imposing, if that makes sense. We go from the intellectual to the physical. Yeah, so it, it too easily spills over yes. into violence. Yes, and but, one leads to the other often.